Today we're going to shoot a quick video showing you how to touch off the tooling on your subspindle 21 through 23 in this case 21 through 24 if you have an L32 and how to touch off your backside tooling in this case 31 through 34 or again if you have an L32 it's going to be 31 through 39 so let's get into it. We're gonna start with the subspindle tooling, 21 through 23. First thing you do, face off with your primary turn tool. Whatever tool is gonna to be facing your part and establishing zero, in our case, it's tool three. It's almost always tool three for us. I will face off with that tool, some stock out. We're just gonna do a cutoff with it. Clean up the end of the bar, establish zero. That's where the part zero is when you're running parts. So we're establishing that zero. Cut off machining completed. We're gonna take our demo tools in this case we have a drill and a boring bar we're going to put our tools in and slide them quite a ways back you want them back behind the subspindle nose we'll just slide them into 22 and 23 out of the way for now because it's in the way so we got 21 22 23 we're going to start with 22 we're in prep page down 22 longitude Center is for centering up the tool in X. You would sweep that with an indicator. We're not doing that today. That goes beyond the scope of this video. We're just touching the tool off. Longitude, man set. Cell 20 makes you hold cycle start. Use your feed override. Get creative with your fingers. You notice I'm running the feed override. It gives me an opportunity to react if something's not right. Cycle start light is off. Our tool has come up and all we're gonna do Pull the tool out to the end of the bar and tighten it down. Easy. We're not getting complicated, we're not getting fancy. We have our tool, you know, tight in our collet, in our holder. Our holder is set up, ready to go. We just slide it out through the end of the bar. And we tighten it down. Ta-da, same thing for 23. From here, we don't move anything, we don't touch anything. Escape, tool 23, longitude, man set. Push and hold cycle start. It's gonna back up, come over to the next tool, come back forward, same deal. All we do, our tool is, our holder assembly, holder and tool assembly is loose. We're gonna slide it out carefully in this case because that's a a delicate little boring bar for this demonstration and all we will do is wiggle it make sure we're we're flat on the flat and snug it down there you go they're touched off no mess no fuss no from here we can just off retract opposite tool post retract and you're done it's that easy you just loose in there face off with whatever tool is establishing the end of your part Tool 21, 22, 24, longitude, man set, cycle start. And then you just slide your holder assembly out to the end of the bar and tighten it down. That being said, it can get more complicated, but I'm not going into that right now because that's programming and we're trying to keep this user friendly. Just how to touch off your tools. So now that we're done with those tools, we'll jump over to your backside tools, 31 through 34 or 39 depending on what machine you have, what pattern of machine. This is the same process for the L's. This is an L20, L32, the K16 we have has tooling on the subspindle, same process. Leave your tool slid back, face off with tool three, longitude, man set, slide your tool out, tighten it down. That's all there is to it across all the machines that have the subspindle tooling. Now we're onto the back side. We have our, our demo part in the subspindle. You do not want to touch off your backside tooling until you have a part with a good overall length in the subspindle. Otherwise, you're just wasting time because you're setting your zero, you're setting your work zero off the end of that part. So if your part is 30 thousandths off on your overall length, you're gonna to have to have a 30 thou offset to compensate. So don't bother setting your backside tooling until you have a part with a good overall length in there. For our purposes, we do. So I'm gonna start one side, work my way across. We'll start with 31, prep tab over to 31 longitude. We've already got a value in there. So this is from the last job. We don't know how far the last part was sticking out. 
we don't know where our tools are. If you do it for a while, you got a pretty good idea of whether or not it's gonna be okay. But to be safe, we always want to avoid broken tooling, man set, and I like to be like minus an inch and a half, something like that. So we're gonna go minus, minus 1.9. Sure, I know that's gonna be fine. We wanna keep it away and then we'll jog it up and touch it off. Feed rate down, if you guessed wrong and it's gonna come up too close, turn your feed rate to zero. Save that tool. So we're gonna go man set, longitude, push and hold cycle start, because that's what this machine wants. And I've just got my feed rate fairly up. There we go, came over, came forward. It's still well back from our tool. And so now we can use the hand wheel to jog it in and touch it off. I'm gonna turn on interference invalid because this tool is set so short that sub spindle is gonna have to enter the no fly zone around the tooling. And I'll just show you, if you don't have this on, you're gonna get to a certain point and it will throw an interference alarm. All you gotta do, back it up, make the alarm go away. Interference invalid. And now you can jog it up without throwing an alarm. So we'll take our piece of paper and we will just touch it off with our piece of paper. There we go. It grabs, I'm good with that. So that's zero for that tool. We have our value here. We're gonna hit input and it applies that value to your longitude and that tool set. Now we got two more. Op retract. You see this one's sticking out quite a ways. We got a tap in there. It could probably be stubbed up more. Maybe it can't be. So this is where making sure that you're giving yourself enough clearance when that tool comes up really gets important. We're gonna go minus two inches. And we'll see if it'll do that. If you go too much on this, it's gonna come over to the tool and it's gonna try to back up and it'll tell you a, a Z2 over travel. And then you just have to reduce that amount that you're keeping it backed off. There you see, you can see it came over and it tried to back up and now it's telling us stroke end exists, side two, Z2. So we'll just reset it. And all we have to do, eyeball it. We've got at least a half inch of clearance there. So I'm gonna go man set. I'm gonna add half an inch. And I'll just do it again. Still trying to back up. Add another half inch, man set. 500 input. You can see this number is getting bigger by a half inch each time. Cycle start, there we go came back and it actually came forward a little bit and it's not throwing an over travel alarm anymore. So now we can just touch it off with our paper like the last tool. There we go, paper drag to grab. We're gonna hit input. It takes the amount you jogged, it applies it to your longitude setting and you're done. Tool's touched off. Quick aside, I should have thrown this in there at the beginning. These tools are already tightened. They're not loose like 21 through 23 was. These tools are already in. They're tight in their holders. They're tight in the block. Op retract. Let it run back. And here we go. We got a live end mill in 34. Same deal. Can you guess what we're going to do next? We're going to go tool 34 man set, you know, minus an inch and a half, sure. Push and hold cycle start. So we just touched off 33, now we're gonna touch off 34. It's an end mill, it's a live tool, doesn't matter, it's the same process. Tool 34, longitude, man set. I already went minus an inch and a half on it. Push and hold cycle start, it's coming over. Something to be aware of when you're running tools on the sub spindle and the back side, these are pretty much in line. So if you're not careful with your lengths and how your tool lengths are sticking out, they're gonna hit. So this spot drill is stubbed up pretty short, so there won't be any issues with interference. But when we come over to knock our card out, this tap sticking out could interfere with one of these tools. And it's something you wanna be really aware of and run it through really slow when you're running your part through until you know that all those tools are gonna clear. You may have to adjust your lengths, you may have to set some tools farther back to make them clear the tools on the other side, or you may have to move them around. You might have to take this tap, 
and put it in 32. You might have to take this drill and put it in 21 to get the tools to mesh correctly without hitting each other and breaking. We're gonna jog it. Our interference invalid is still highlighted. We're just gonna jog it up, touch it off. There we go. Touched off, input. This number is getting applied to that value, just like so. Op retract, and you're done. Ta-da! Same deal for the L32s. You'd have, you know, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Same deal. Tool 39 longitude, the gang is gonna pick up. You know, the Y2 gang is gonna pick up. Touch your tool off. It's the same process, you just have more tools. So if I jog my sub over really quick and just kind of visually see, we're looking pretty good here, but all our tools are clearing. We're not gonna have any interference issues here. So you can see if we had a tool in 32 that was sticking out, it might be close. We might have issues. If we had a tool in 21, we might have issues with the tap. So you have to be aware of how those tools are stacking up together and make sure they're gonna clear. But outside of that, gotta highlight the interference in balance. And that's it, we're done. It's no different than touching off the tools on your gang. They're just laid over sideways. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully I was pretty concise and useful in that video. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a like anyway. Uh, comment, share, and we'll see you in the next video.